Hello everyone, back to you again to today's video, doing Jamie Friday for today's video. As always on a Friday, we're having a detailed look at the weather month ahead. It's going to take us pretty much through to the end of October. So we're going uh, well into the middle of the autumn now with uh, these more extended updates. We'll see what the JMA and CFSB2 models think is in store um, for October in a second. Uh, just say that the links to uh, the JMA and CFSB2 websites can be found on the links page. So we'll start off with the JMA and then we'll have a look at CFSB2. We'll compare the two and see if we can find some trends for the uh, month ahead with the two models. So beginning with the JMA 500 millibar height anomaly chart from the pole view down. So this is the northern hemisphere looking down from the pole. So this is the north pole uh, just here, the mid latitudes of the northern hemisphere are around here. Uh, and just to give you your bearings so you know where everybody is. So that's America just there with Canada uh, up here. We've got sort of uh, Asia and uh, also Russia uh, around here. Europe is just there. And the Atlantic with the British Isles is just there and Ireland as well. So now you know where everybody is and exactly what you are looking at. Let's have a look at the uh, week one, 500 mil of our height. Normally this is taking us from today, the 29th of September through to the 6th of October. Uh, by the way, brighter colours, sort of reds, yellows, oranges, they extrapolate to high pressure and darker colours, blues extrapolate to low pressure. So for the week ahead, we've got quite a nice ridge here down to the south of the country with above average, with below average heights, I should say, uh, up to the north. So the jet stream is pushing a little bit further northwards as well. That should be reasonable, really, especially for the south. You would think there's a fair amount of dryish weather coming through at times, albeit more unsettled up in the north. Remember, this is an, anom an anomaly over a weekly period. There will be a little bit more unsettled conditions coming through, particularly Sunday and Monday, when we get the remnants of a hurricane uh, in the form of quite a deep area of low pressure passing to the north of Scotland. So that could bring some wet weather even into the south Sunday and Monday. But for the overall weekly, weekly anomaly, that doesn't look too bad, especially so for southern parts of the country. The week two anomaly takes us from the 6th through to the 13th of October, and we find that area of above average heights pulling out into the Atlantic. So it's out to our south and southwest, below average heights centering over Scandinavia. That might be quite cool for Scandinavia. It looks like we're probably doing something a bit like this with the flow and with the jet stream. So it implies a northwest southeast trajectory to the jet stream, uh, which brings the most unsettled conditions up to the north. The driest conditions are still down to the south. Could be a little bit cool, especially for northern parts of the country. And then the week uh, three and four uh, anomaly looks like this, taking us from the 13th through 27th of October. Looks quite settled. We've got above average heights building through the country, but notice they do extend up to the north. So they're going up sort of Iceland, Greenland, that sort of area. Quite a deep trough is in, again, across the northeast of uh, Europe. And it means that we're probably doing something a bit like that uh, with the flow and with the jet stream. So they amount to dry weather there into the second half of October, but the position of the ridge looks quite cool. We may be well be bringing the air down from the north into that ridge. And, uh, of course, we've got, again, long nights coming along now. So it means that we probably will be at risk of ground frost at the very least. Maybe even some air frost there as we go into the second part of uh, October. So reasonably settled, yes, but probably a bit on the cold side uh, with the position of that ridge centred over and extending to the north of the country. Let's have a look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies from the JMA for the next month. This is the tropical and mid-latitude view. So we've got the equator uh, just here. We've got the uh, northern hemisphere on the northern side of the equator just there. Southern hemisphere is uh, down there. We can't see the poles on this view, but the south pole uh, is just there with the north pole 
and we're just looking at the pole view down uh, over there. Uh, so we've got America, just here. Russia is there, sort of Asia and uh, Siberia over there. And the Atlantic is here, British Isles in the top right hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. So, a reminder of the 500 bit of a height anomaly for week one, taking us from the 29th of September to 6th of October. Above average heights to the south, below average heights up to the north, and bring the jet stream through. More or less to the north of the country. So the southern areas, it is reasonably settled, albeit we get a more unsettled interlude around Sunday and Monday. Uh, for the north, actually, that's quite an unsettled situation. Precipitation anomalies are reflecting this. So the north of the country, Scotland and Northern Ireland, are coming out wetter than average. England and Wales is coming out drier than average in the uh, week ahead. The temperature anomaly looks like this. It is very close uh, to average, a little bit above average for the north, a little bit below average, perhaps down in the southern part of the country. But uh, many parts of the country are coming out with near normal temperatures really there for the uh, week ahead. Moving through to week two, which takes us from the 6th through to the 13th of October, we find that we've got this area of above average heights to our west and southwest and bring the jet stream on a northwest southeast trajectory. You can't really see Scandinavia, but there is a trough up there to our northeast. The precipitation anomaly uh, is generally drier than average in most parts of the country by this point, the 6th to the 13th of October. And the temperature anomaly looks a little bit on the cool side, if anything. It's close to average, but especially down to the south and southwest, it's a little bit cooler than average. Then we go through to weeks three and four, and we've got that ridge building through the country. You can't see it, but it does extend to the north. We know that it goes up towards Greenland and uh, Iceland over there. So the uh, precipitation anomaly, that is still coming out drier than average. So reasonably dry October coming up here, if the JMA is right, after what's been quite a wet September. Um, so driving average through the 13th, 27th of October, the temperature anomaly is close to average once again, possibly a little bit on the mile on average side. I'm not sure about that because the way that ridge is extending to our north, I think we'd be, uh, we'd be entrenching some quite cold air into that ridge, particularly at night. The model is seeing the ridge and thinking that because there's a ridge there, it's got to be uh, a mild scenario. But by the time you get through to the second half of October, because the nights are getting so long, if you start to entrench cold air into those ridges, then you will start to get night frost, and this will limit daytime temperature potential as well. So I think it is going for a mostly dry, yes, but possibly quite cool uh, end or second half to October there. Have a look at CFSV2 next. So again, these are the 500 millibar heights broken down into weekly periods. The first weekly period taking us from the 29th of September to the 5th of October. Above average heights are to our south, below average heights up to the northwest. Have got a ridge over Scandinavia as well. Very complicated situation, but we're doing something a bit like that uh, with the flow. So for particularly southern parts of the country, reasonable amount of dry weather, probably quite mild. For the north, it is a little bit more unsettled, especially, as we know, focused around uh, Sunday and Monday. Then we go through to week two, which is the 6th through to the 12th of October, and we've got that area of above average heights pulling out into the middle of the Atlantic, below average heights up to uh, the north, northeast. That sends the jet stream onto a northwest, southeast trajectory. So, again, probably pulling down quite cool this year, especially so to uh, the north. A reasonable amount of dry weather in the south and southwest, always a bit more unsettled up in the north and the northeast. And then this looks properly unsettled as we go through to the 13th to the 19th of October. We've got above average heights in the middle of the Atlantic going up towards Greenland. A trough is uh, extending through the west of Europe, and we have got some ridging over here as well. So, again, quite a complicated pattern. We're doing something a bit like that. Uh, with the flow and with the jet stream. We're placed on the cool side of the jet there, I think. We're probably entrenching quite cool air into that trough. So that's unsettled and quite chilly as we go into that middle part 
of October. And then we finish up uh, in week four, which is the 20th to 26th of October, taking the above average, the above average heights are going out towards uh, Canada, actually, uh, which is quite unusual. The below average heights are extending to the west of the British Isles. And it looks like it's all just going rather westerly, southwesterly there. So still unsettled, but probably a lot milder there. Uh, for the final stages of October. Temperature anomalies look like this with CFSV2, the 29th of September to 5th of October, coming out generally a little bit milder than average in the weekend. Notice very, very cold temperature anomalies across large parts of uh, Russia. Uh, then we go through to uh, week two temperature anomalies, which again can be a little bit mild on average from the 6th to 12th of October. Still looking pretty cold here over much of Russia. Uh, into week three, which is the 13th to the 19th of October. That's coming out a little bit cooler than average then. Beginning to warm up perhaps across central parts of Russia at that point, but still looking very cold over towards Siberia. And then we get through to uh, week four, which is the 20th to 26th of October, and that looks solidly milder than average. Many parts of the Eurasia also look like temperatures are beginning to lift up as well. The CFS is right. We could have a little bit uh, of a mild of an average October, but the JMA, I think, does hint at a cooler than average month. Finally, precipitation with CFS B2, so the week ahead, 29th of September, 5th of October, coming out average with the rainfall, uh, which perhaps is a little bit surprising. You'd probably expect to be a bit drier than that, given the height anomaly. Um, we go through to the 6th to the 12th of October, again, close to average, hints at being a bit dry on average to our south. Uh, then we go through to week uh, 3. We've got a trough through the country then, so you'll expect this to be quite an unsettled week, but I think the scene is weakening a little bit. Uh, and then go through to week four, which is the 20th to the 6th of October. And that's actually looking a little bit on the wetter side than, as we know, the flow is going into the southwest. A little bit of difference there between the two models, really, in the way they're seeing October uh, playing out. I think the first part of it is OK. So um, we've got the ridge down to our southwest and the below average heights to the north, low pressure to the north as we go through the first week to 10 days of the month, which probably brings a mix of dry and uh, reasonably mildish days, but also some cooler wet days. But it's really from around the 10th of October onwards, so into the sort of middle part of the month, and then the second half of the month, that we've got this discrepancy between the two models. The um, JMA seems to be quite a settled month, quite a dry October coming up. Potentially, I think that turns things a lot cooler as well as we get into the second half of the month and we bring the air down from the north into that ridge, which would be enough to start producing night frost. Whereas the CFS is a lot more unsettled. It is milder as well, especially as we go towards the final stages of October. But the main thing is that it's much more unsettled than the JMA for the second half of October. Uh, and we'd probably finish up with fairly wettish month, I would have thought, with CFS V2, where the JMA would be quite dry. So you're going to have to wait and see uh, how things play out over the coming uh, few days and weeks. Obviously, we'll keep you updated at Gas Office. Remember, this is just a snapshot of how these long-range models are looking today. Next week, they could look significantly different. Uh, all long-range forecasts or any forecasting beyond sort of 7 to 10 days always comes with a big health warning. Tomorrow, we'll have the weekend forecast. That's with short-range models with a uh, Pretty good um, accuracy generally most weeks. So uh, come back for that tomorrow. And of course, on Sunday, we've got the fourth winter update. That's going to be a very interesting day on Sunday. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.